I'm not honestly sure how to even start this video off. Ooh. Well, here we are. This isn't, this isn't where I expected I would be a couple weeks ago or where my wife thought we, I would be a couple weeks ago, but here we are. <clears throat> um, next week's I'm going to try to splice together a chronological video where I kind of depict how everything went down and we did a little filming like my wife and Marquita and Steve Funk and Olmstead all really helped in and a big shout out to all of them they really came in clutch over this last week that uh, all this has been going down talk about island community coming to the rescue <laughs> that's right island community coming to the rescue what's that kids going to school <laughs> So, what I think this video is, is just going to be a short, kind of, for those who enjoy watching, like a um, summary of what all happened and uh, what I think we're going to be doing for the next couple weeks. So right now, we're going to pick up my truck, take it back to her mom and dad's place. Then we've got some running around to do. Well, so you probably know, I uh, <clears throat> had a uh, surgery and then had another surgery. We'll go into that in a minute, but um, I promised my wife, I promised my doctor, I promised nurses. Pretty much promised everybody that I was going to take it easy till the end of this month, and I, I plan on doing that. Because um, to be honest, there's really not a whole lot I can do. I can't really use my right arm or hand very much right now. I can use my right arm and I can lift it, but my forearm and everything below that's pretty much just blah. Um, so I'm going to take it easy. So. The good news is, uh, is we're going to be in town for the rest of the month. Uh, but we've got a lot of stuff to do with the boat. We can try to finish up some of the mooring stuff. Um, so this isn't, uh, we're not like just dedicated and turning into a boat channel, but I mean, that's all I really have to offer right now. Either that or I can just sit back and and cry myself to sleep at night so I'm gonna try to stay motivated read my manuals get all that straightened out there's still a lot of items that we need to buy for the boat safety you know safety items I still need to get a radio installed on in the boat but that's probably gonna be in a couple weeks because I can't you know I can't really use my arm to put a radio or anything like that in but I can start gathering the materials so that's what we're gonna start doing is, um, so probably for the rest of the week is we're just gonna start, it, just gonna be in town stuff. Hopefully you don't mind. Um, but that, you know, it just is what it is. It's a, a crazy, crazy, crazy thing happened. And um, like I said, we'll go into that next week. Uh, and uh, I'll talk about it a little bit here in a minute, but it's just, you know, it's one of those things where a worst, like, a worst case scenario can happen and and that's that's what happened to me just it went from bad to worse real fast and here i am <laughs> all right well i'm gonna get the truck back over to my mother and father-in-law's place there we go wish me luck sugar it's those one arm things that we're not used to <laughs> that's right all right
brisk 19 degrees today. Gotta love that. All right, let's get this back to her house. Give me your seatbelt and then I'll drop this back down. It's a nice big pen. It says Alaska Homestead on it. That goes like this. Okay, you want this back down? Uh, probably, probably not, no, yeah. Okay, thanks, sugar. Mm -hmm. So what, what happened, you said? Like, how did this all happen? I got no clue. I have no clue how this happened. All I know is I was supposed to be at the cabin taking care of the chickens, living, living my best life, and my wife was supposed to come to town and help her mom and dad out because her mom was having a surgery for a hernia. And so, about just a couple days after we left, after I left, Raven, Raven was sick, remember? And so uh, we, her and Raven stayed there, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna take Skipper, and we're gonna go back out to the island. So we went back out to the island for a few days. Um, well, not even for a few days, for a, uh, a couple days, and I. I felt like a sharp pain in my arm. Now I get this, I get tennis elbow in both of both my arms. So I thought it was just tennis elbow acting out. And it, it could have been, I don't know. Nobody knows, not, nobody's sure how all this went down. So I, I was just like, yeah, it's just tennis elbow flaring up. So, you know, I just kept trucking along. And then like on the fourth day, back at the cabin it flared up really bad and so it went from like a, a like a four pain level to like a nine so I called my wife and I said listen my arm I mean I can't hardly use my right arm right now I don't know what's going on and and so this is where the whole walk it off mentality can get you in trouble because that's a, that's exactly what I did for the next four days I just walked it off. I wasn't able to use this arm for anything, so everything I did start the generator, pour water into the water filtration. I'd have to use this arm to like hold stuff up, but for pour, pulling the you know the rip cord for the to start the generator, nothing. So for them four days, I was just in excruciating pain, and I said, you know, if it doesn't get better tomorrow, then I'm gonna I'm gonna call my wife again and tell her something's up. So I, I, uh, um, it did, obviously it didn't get better. So I called her and I said, listen, I think I need to go see a doctor. So she said, okay. Uh, I called one of my friends that works for Coastal Helicopter because I was like, God, oh, it'd be easy for him to help me get Skipper into the helicopter. But he wasn't working that day. And I was like, you know, somebody that I don't know is not gonna hop out of the helicopter and help me get Skipper in the helicopter, especially without a kennel. And I'm not even sure, or my friend would. Uh, I just know that he takes his dog back and forth to the island. So, it was, you know, I was just gonna ask the question. So anyways, long story short, I called Steve Funk up and said, listen, Steve, uh, I hurt my arm. I, I really could use some help. And he said, no problem. The downside was he said my boat's buried and I gotta shovel it out. And so about four hours later, I get the text, I'm, I'm on my way. So I couldn't, I couldn't use my thumb to, to drive, you know, to push the accelerator for the four-wheeler. So I, I, uh, I packed up a small backpack and me and Skipper started making the walk over to the, to the spit where I was gonna get picked up. And he picked me up, and so I, uh, it was hurt, it was painful to get my glove on. So when I got in his cab, I started pulling my glove off. And he was like, man, dude, your hand is swollen, man. It's like, he's like, you got a serious infection. So that's, that's where we thought I had an infection. And, and I did have an infection, to be, I mean, to be honest, there was an infection. Still is an infection. It's still hot up here by my elbow. Um. So anyways, uh, my wife calls the doctor and gets me at a doctor's appointment that afternoon and I go see the doctor and 
It gives me a shot of antibiotics. He gives me a shot of pain medicine. And he gives me a prescription for antibiotics, like oral antibiotics. So I, uh, and I go to labs. So I go home, you know, after that, I'm just resting. And then the next day, the doctor calls back and says, uh, you I don't remember, my red or white blood cells aren't doing what they say, you know, what typically they would be doing if I had an infection. So he said, could you please come back? We're going to do an ultrasound and an x-ray. So I went back, did the ultrasound, did the x-ray. Uh, we started heading back home. And then I got a phone call that says, your x-ray, something looks abnormal on your x-ray. Could you come back up and go to the hospital and do a CT scan? So I do that. He says that, you know, and then the next day he calls and says, the CT scan didn't really show anything that I was concerned about. So what I'm going to have you do, he said, what's your pain level? I said, it's like an eight or a nine. And so he said, what I'm going to have you do is just go to the emergency room and and they'll just, they'll have to figure it out because I, I don't know what's going on with you. They have more resources than, than we do at the clinic. So that afternoon I check into the emergency room and uh, they figure out that I'm not, I'm gonna be here for a while. So they get me a room and uh, they start, uh, you know, get me set up with antibiotics on the IV and they do, um, they do, um, pain medication on the, on the, um, through my IV. I don't know what it's, not dopamine. It was some, I think it started with a D or an N or something, but anyways, the pain meds, uh, the, the narcotics that they were giving me through my IV were not touching the pain. And the, the nurse kept asking, you know, she'd give me the shot. You'd feel it right away because your face would get all tingly and you're, you know, you get like a little hot flash kind of. And so she'd say, what's your pain level? And I'd say, uh, it's a nine. And she kept saying, you're on antibiotics, you're in the hospital, you're getting mass doses of narcotics. This can't be a nine. And I'm like, you know, and, and my personality, I'm sitting there cutting jokes. I mean, I'd wince, I'd be like, you know, funny joke, ha ha, ha that hurts. Um, so, so I got an MRI that day, and then that night she gives me a, um, she gives me a double dose of the, she goes, I'm going to give you a double on this stuff. And so she gave me a double dose of the narcotics and she said, what's your pain level? And I, I dude, it hit me hard. I said, it's a nine. And then I went, I was like, I have to go to sleep because I mean, I felt I felt all the medicine she was giving me and it just knocked me out. But, you still felt the pain. but I still felt the pain. So that morning at hold on look at my wife. She's such a trooper unhooking the unhooking the trailer. So that night at three o'clock in the morning she comes and wakes me up and she goes, I got the results back from the MRI. She said, uh, I called the doctor, he's on his way, we're gonna do an emergency surgery. She said, we think you have what's called compartment syndrome. To be honest, still to this day, I'm gonna look it up for next week's video. Still to this day, I'm not 100% sure what compartment syndrome is. All I know is it makes you hurt. It may, it's painful. And I haven't asked her, I said, um, I said, uh, so I, I, think it's broken. I said, is it, is it painful? And she goes, oh, it's excruciating. And I said, well, then that explains the pain. So she told me I had compartment syndrome. They started prepping me for OR and um, away I went. So I woke up the, that morning, you know, after surgery and man, I felt like a million bucks. The nine had turned into like a three. All the stuff they were giving me, the oral medicine, the, the, the IV medicine, 
it all was working. I mean, I just felt so relieved to not have that pressure and that pain in my forearm. Um, so yeah, I, was I happy to have the surgery? I prefer not to have, but man, did I feel, I felt so much better after, you know, the pain, the pain was gone. You'll have to look it up because I don't know what it is just yet. All I know is, is that the muscle swelled. There's six compartments of muscles in your forearm. In this one compartment, my muscle was swelling and bleeding. It killed off 75% of that muscle. So they had to cut out 75% of one of those muscle groups, remove that. And then they, then they washed it all out, stuck a sponge in there and hooked me up to like some vacuum sealer, like vacuum pump thing. And I had to walk around with that on my right arm and an IV in my left arm for three days. And then, then on the fourth day, he said, hey, we're going to come in and wash all that out, uh, stitch you up, and um, go from there. So they did that. And then he came in the, the following day to check up on me. And I said, you know, I go, I'm... I gotta get out of here, to be honest. I go, is it possible that I just leave today? I, I told him, I said, I won't do anything. I'll take I'll take it easy, I'll rest, I'll take my medicine. And he was like, yeah, we can get you out of here today. The standing joke while I was in the hospital was, as soon as I got there, I opened, I mean, it was like 10 degrees outside. So it was, it was not warm, but I, I cracked my window, I opened up my window to the hospital room I was in and the nurses constantly kept trying to shut that window. And for me, the having the window open and having that fresh cold breeze blow into my hospital room was basically like my attempt to keep my sanity. <laughs> I mean, I know, it might, it might, I might be trying to make it a little over, you know, more dramatic than it really is, but I just was, I, I wasn't meant to be in a hospital room. And, and so I, I, was, I, I did fine, but the window, the window and the fresh breeze definitely helped out. And that, that pretty much sums it up. Um, he let me go and uh, tried to be a good boy for the last two days. And here we are. I'm, uh, we're actually going to buy a, a recliner so I don't have to lay in bed all day. I can actually sit up and still keep my arm like elevated, you know, on a pillow. Because uh, this laying in bed all day is just killing me. So that's what we're going to do, Steve. Uh, and, and so that next week's video, I'm going to try to get all this footage. Because Steve Olmstead, Steve Funk, Marquita, they help us so much with so many different things. Uh, I'm going to try to get it all put together in a video. They were taking footage while I was laid up they, you know they helped me get the boat the chickens they they did a they they just came through when we really needed them the most and that's what friends are for so yeah we'll, we'll always be in debt to them anyways um let's go let's go meet up with Steve Olmstead and get a uh, get a recliner so I guess what I'm trying to say is no matter where you are no matter what you're doing when I say the phrase live free, it's it's a mental thing. When I cracked that window, I was as free in the hospital as I was back on the homestead. So live free. Well, we want to really thank each and every one of you for all the uh, prayers and, and positive thoughts you sent our way. Where's mm -hmm. Steven? There he is. All right, we're here at Costco. We're going to go get a recliner. Mm. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Operation success. Are you going to uh, you gonna sit in there? Take a picture of you sitting there. Oh, yeah. You want to film me sitting in this? Yeah. Costco special. <laughs> I was trying to talk Brian into getting this too, this Husqvarna yeah, nice. sprayer for the cabin. <clears throat> okay, babe. What do you think? Is that gonna work for you? Yeah, it's gonna work. Can okay, I sit on your lap? <laughs> <laughs> that works. That'll do it for sure. Okay. All right. 
What's the selling points? Well, I think the glider's super nice. It's got little head support here. I think when you recline it, you're gonna be very comfortable. <laughs> I love it. Let's get it. I think he's spot on. <laughs> look here, look here. I'm with one of Juno's finest. Part, oh, of the G that. part of the JPD right here. <laughs> so listen, all you criminals out there. You see this guy? You better start running. <laughs> no, all right. Yeah. yeah, maybe we can. Okay. Stick it and pick it. Hold on, I'll put the bottom first. Yeah. Yeah, right there. There we go. Like a glove. All right. Look at that. Put it inside? Yeah. Okay. Let me know. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, just drop her down. All right. Look at this. French. Very sophisticated. All right, well, Steve helped us get the chair inside the, inside the house, so always, uh, again, we're in debt to Steve. He's our good buddy. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Have a great day. All right. So I decided to come over here to the boat. I noticed something that was a little troubling. All these bungs are, um, these plugs are super hard to get a hold of because they they're specific to the Stabycraft model. So when I came over here the other day to check out the boat for the first time, I noticed they weren't in there. And so I thought we should go and find them for sure. So that's what we're doing right now. Come on into my humble abode. There's my dinghy. They packed it for uh, transport. So I got uh, the pop puller downriggers up front here, but look what I saw when I was walking in. There you go. This is the gold that <laughs> it's hard to get a hold of, so I definitely wanted to make sure that we had those in our possession. Oh yeah, this is the first time I've been inside the boat since I saw it at the um, at the uh, when I went up to Sedotna to take a look at it. So, we do have some, some stuff that we have to do with the boat. Uh, there was things that I had the boat, uh, the Honda shop do for me, uh, and there were some things that I was just gonna do here. I knew I was gonna take the radar off our boat that we have now and just plop it on here. So we've gotta put a radar on here. I'm gonna put a VHF radio up top here. Get that radio installed right up there. The one downside to this boat is there is not a cup holder on this side of the boat. There's two cup holders on the passenger side. So I'm going to have to do some head scratching and see where I can put a cup holder on, over here. I mean, they make cup holders. You can suction cup to um, the window. I don't know. That's, uh, that's going to be one of my biggest um, challenges is where is my cup holder going to be? So, yes, the VHF radio, it comes with the holes cut out for a stereo already. I didn't want to pay the, um, the high price for the Fusion stereo, but I might put a little, you know, less expensive stereo in here. Um, we shall see about that. But so the VHF radio, we need to get all the fenders for the thing, the, the bow, the stern lines. Um, what else? I've got I've got a long list of notepads. Oh, I've got two fans that we're gonna we're gonna install. 
The fans are to keep the circulation on the windows so the windows don't fog up. And also, uh, maybe we'll have a fan either back high or down in the V-berth to circulate air. Because when the windows are all closed up, um, there's not a whole lot of air circulation. So, that's another thing that we're going to do is install the, the uh, fans. So long story short is uh, we've got quite a bit of small things that we, we can get done while we're uh, recuperating. And uh, I think this is this just provides us with a perfect opportunity to, to knock those out. And um, yeah, get them, get them knocked out while I'm kind of laid up recovering. So we, if uh, I think that's the direction we're going to go for the next couple of weeks until maybe I can get back to my old self. Um, so I hope you don't mind uh, us switching gears and going into boat, into boat and uh, into mooring mode. There you go. Well, stick around. We'll see what kind of trouble we can get into while we're in town. And remember, I can't point. Hold on. Uh, live free. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week.